The use of single joint exercises has actually been questioned in the literature, with a 2016 review concluding that the use of single joint exercises provided no additional benefit to multi-joint exercises for hypertrophy. However, as pointed out by a response to this review by Ribeiro and colleagues, there existed only three studies, and therefore there were many other single joint and multi-joint exercises not explored, making the conclusions of the review premature. This begs the question, are multi-joint exercises enough for stimulating optimal hypertrophy? More specifically, in this video, we'll be taking a look at the bench press and asking whether the bench press alone is enough for growth of the triceps. This is what a recent 2020 study by Brandau and colleagues explored. 43 untrained men were split into one of four groups, a multi-joint group, a single joint group, a multi joint plus single joint group, or a single joint plus multi joint group. The multi joint group performed the bench press only, the single joint group performed tricep skull crushers only. The multi joint plus single joint group performed the bench press followed by tricep skull crushers. The single joint plus multi joint group did the reverse of this, they performed tricep skull crushers first, followed by the bench press. For the exercise, or exercises, the groups performed, an 80% of one rep max load was taken to failure each set. Three minutes of rest was given between sets. All four groups trained twice per week for 10 weeks. From weeks one to four, three sets per exercise were performed for all groups. From weeks five to eight, four sets per exercise were performed for all groups. From weeks nine to 10, five sets per exercise were performed for all groups. MRI was used to measure cross-sectional area changes of the pectoralis major and triceps brachii before and after. Additionally, cross-sectional area of each triceps brachii head was measured before and after. What the researchers found was that for pectoralis major cross-sectional area, the multi-joint group, the multi-joint plus single joint group, and the single joint plus multi-joint group experienced significantly greater increases compared to the single joint group. And this makes sense, the single joint group were the only group not training the bench press, which of course, primarily trains the pectoralis major. Interestingly, despite the lack of between group significance, performing the tricep skull crushes before the bench press resulted in lower relative growth of the pectoralis major compared to the two groups performing the bench press first. It could be speculated that performing the tricep skull crushes before the bench press fatigues the triceps, resulting in the triceps being more of a limiting factor in bench press performance meaning the pectoralis major receives less of a stimulus. For triceps cross-sectional area, increases were statistically similar between all groups. However, I believe this is probably a type 2 error, as looking at the percentage increases, the multi-joint group did experience half the gains compared to the other three groups performing tricep skull crushes. Therefore, it seems the bench press alone is not enough for triceps hypertrophy. This is further supported when looking at the growth of each triceps head. Interestingly, the bench press does seem to be good for growth of the lateral head. As the groups that were performing the bench press displayed significantly greater growth of this head compared to the single joint group that only performed tricep skull crushes. However, for the long head, there were significantly greater increases for the groups performing tricep skull crushes compared to the multi joint group that only performed the bench press. Increases in cross sectional area for the medial head were statistically similar between all groups. However, again, this is likely a type 2 error, as the groups that trained tricep skull crushes experienced roughly double the growth compared to the multi-joint group training only the bench press. So, as we can see, the bench press does seem to be good for growth of the lateral head. However, for the medial head, and especially the long head, the bench press alone is not enough. Concerning the long head, its anatomy can help us to understand why the bench press is ineffective. The long head is the only head of the triceps that crosses the shoulder joint. Therefore, aside from elbow extension, it is also involved in shoulder extension, which is putting your arms behind your body, and adduction, which is putting your arms by your side. As a result, during the eccentric phase of the bench press, as the shoulders are extending, the long head is shortened. Therefore, on the upcoming concentric phase, it cannot contract much further, and so its ability to produce force is limited. With tricep skull crushers, the shoulders are maintained in a flex position, meaning the long head can produce force effectively throughout the movement. Interestingly, putting our shoulder into even more of a flex position, such as during overhead tricep extensions, 
should stretch the long head even more, potentially meaning it can exert even greater force. But regardless, for optimal development of the triceps in the long run, it's probably a good idea to include various elbow extension exercises at different shoulder elevations. Additionally, as we have seen, the bench press and even other multi-joint exercises like overhead presses will undoubtedly contribute to hypertrophy of the triceps. However, the use of single joint tricep exercises at various shoulder elevations is still necessary to ensure we target the three heads optimally.